Hi class, today we're going to be starting chapter 12, which is on um, human genetics and human inheritance patterns. So first we're going to look at um, what makes humans male or female. And these are the sex chromosomes, which are X and Y. For males, we are XY, and females, you are, um, we are XX. So um, in your notes packet, you have a place that you can fill that in. Um, the gametes, the eggs can only carry an X, and the sperm can carry either an X or a Y. And the reason that is is because males have XY, so they have um, an X that will get passed on to one cell and a Y that will get passed on to a cell. Females can only pass on the X chromosome. So if it, um, the determination of what a child will be, the sex that a child will be, is based on the male, um, not based on the female. The individual who discovered sex chromosomes was Thomas Morgan uh, in the early 1900s, and he worked with fruit flies, which you guys watched that tiny little video clip we did on um, the kind of introduction to genetics, and um, Thomas Morgan was mentioned in there with the fruit fly experiments. So um, there are some times that chromosomes kind of link together or traits link together. So sex linkage is when genes are found on the sex chromosomes. X-linked genes are genes that are on the X chromosome. And Y-linked genes are genes that are on the Y chromosome. So X-linked genes, um, most of the genes that are sex-linked are considered to be on the X chromosome. The Y-linked genes are pretty much just genes that um, produce the or code for the male reproductive organs. There's a few um, traits on the Y chromosome, but not a whole lot. Now, if you notice here, this is a picture of what an X chromosome looks like, and um, it's rather large, normal size chromosome, and then the Y chromosome is rather small. So we're going to try some sex-linked genetic problems, and um, you have... Uh, Punnett square given to you, sex linked problem number one. Um, what we're going to do um, off to the side is write this in big R equals red eyes and little r is equal to white eyes. And so the, the um, problem that we're going to give here is that we have a female fruit fly that has um, homozygous dominant for the trait, and we have a male who is. Um, white-eyed. And so notice here, since the trait is linked to this, the X chromosome, the letter goes with the X, only with the X. There's no trait on the Y chromosome here because it's not carrying that particular trait. So we pull this information in, just like you do on any other Punnett square. But now we're looking at whether the individual is male or female, as well as if they have um, the red or the white eyes. So in this case, um, because the male is passing on this white trait, and the female can only pass on the red trait, all of the offspring are going to have red eyes. So our results are 100% red-eyed females, 0% white-eyed, okay, and we have 100% red-eyed males, 0% white-eyed males. So now we need to show whether they are male or female in the problem or in our results. We're going to skip that. That's what we just did. Example two. We have a red eye male that mates with a red heterozygous female. So this is what that would look like in our cross. We have the red eyed male here crossed with a red-eyed female who is a carrier, they're heterozygous, so they're called a carrier of that trait. And when we put that into the Punnett square, 
This is what you should see. And then our results of that, we have 100% that are red-eyed female, 0% white-eyed female. And you can see that here. This one's a carrier, but still red-eyed. Um, when we look at our males, we have half of them being red and half of them being white-eyed. So the female passed on that white-eyed trait to her boy. The male, um, the, the father, just passed on the Y chromosome. So the father is not passing on the white-eyed trait to their son, just passing on the trait of being male, the Y. Example three, white-eyed male mates with a red heterozygous female. So you can go ahead and pause here and fill in your Punnett square. And then our results. 50% red female, 50% white female, 50% red male, 50% white male, if we're looking at the percentages. Or you could say that they are 25% of each possibility. Or you could say 50% of them are red total and 50% of them are white, with some of them being male and female. All right, so um, one other thing that Thomas Morgan was able to discover was linkage groups. He found that some genes that are located on the same chromosome are inherited together. So we've already said that um, Mendel came up with the law of independent assortment, saying that genes basically aren't linked together. Well, he was lucky in the traits that he studied were not linked together. But there are some traits that seem to get passed on together more often than others, and these are called linked genes. So it goes against Mendel's law of independent assortment, and the way to look at this is in this example here, gene A is really far away from gene B and gene C, but genes B and C are really close together. So the chances of them being passed on together are very good. There's probably very little chance that during crossing over they will get separated. More than likely the place where it gets separated is up here and trades with this leg of this chromosome. So B and C will often get passed on together because they're so close together on the chromosome. And A will never get passed hardly with B and C the way that they are. Here's an image of what that looks like and crossing over. So um, if genes are close together, they have a very small chance of being separated. If genes are far apart, they have a really big chance of being separated during crossing over. Here's another example. Which two genes have the highest probability of crossing over and the lowest? So A and C have the highest chance of being separated during crossing over, and A and B have the lowest chance of being separated during crossing over. You have a picture of this on your notes packet um, showing what a real chromosome looks like with particular traits that are um, close together on the chromosome just to show you. And then these are some of our chromosomes and what is there. We have a map of this in the classroom you can look at as well. Okay, so let's practice a sex linkage problem. Use these genotypic symbols for the sex link traits of red-green color blindness in humans to solve the problems that follow. So that picture down at the bottom right of the um, down here is actually something that they might use to see if you are colorblind. You should be able to see that there is a number in here, a five. Um, if you can't see that, you might have, there's a chance that you might be colorblind, um, or maybe you already know if you are. Um, some people will see a couple different things in there as well, but there's some blues and greens and yellows that make up this five. So we're going to practice this with a real trait, colorblindness. A normal female is X big B, X big B. A carrier female is X big B, X little b. Colorblind female is X little b, X little b. A normal male is X big BY, and a colorblind male is X little BY. Now those things are already on your notes packet. If you don't have your notes packet, you could write those in. So here's our problem one. A normal female marries a colorblind male. What are the chances that the offspring will be colorblind if they are females, and what are the chances that the offspring will be colorblind if they are males? So we have a normal female marries a colorblind male. What 
Okay, and we're going to um, say that she is heterozygous for the trait. X big B, she's a carrier. X big B, X little B, crossed with X little B, Y. And so we want to know what are the chances that the offspring are going to be colorblind? Oh, sorry. I thought I gave the answers there. So we're going to fill this in. X big B, X little B, X little B, Y. Okay, go ahead and take a minute to pause and check your answers after you have tried them yourself. Okay, so the answers here, um, we have... 25% of them being females that are colorblind and 25% of them being colorblind males. Okay. Problem two, a colorblind female, so that means she's going to be X little b, X little b, marries a normal vision male, so X big B, Y. So you'll pull these over. Go ahead and pause and just check what you have okay um, a normal male how many of the female offspring will be carriers of the colorblind allele so how many are going to be carriers a hundred percent of the females are carriers because they got the, that's the only thing their mom could pass. So they had to get one of them from your mom, and then the dad gave the good gene, so they're not colorblind. Now, the boys are all colorblind because the mom can only pass a colorblind gene, and the dad is only passing the Y trait, not his good colorblind gene. Okay, we have one more problem. A man whose mother is colorblind marries a woman with normal vision so we're gonna give her X big B X big B and a man whose mother is colorblind so that means he had to get the little B from his mom he got the good Y from his dad um, what is the genotype of the husband which is here what percent of their offspring can be expected to be colorblind and what percentage of their offspring can be expected to be carriers? So take a time, the time to pause here and fill in the work. Okay, so um, you should be able to have checked your work, see if you have that correct. And the questions here, what percent of their offspring can be expected to be colorblind? 0% will be colorblind, so that means 100% will be normal vision. But what percent will be carriers? 100% of the females will be carriers of the trait.